what are my top five premium whiskeys of 2024? I'm Jeff, this is D Whiskey, stick around. Okay, so top five premium whiskeys of 2024. Now for this list, I set the arbitrary minimum price at 100 US dollars, although most whiskeys are gonna be much more expensive than that. So these are all at the higher end in terms of what I'm willing to pay. Uh, so it's important to note this is not my whiskey of the year. Although if you're in a higher tax bracket, you could consider this video to be the big one because honestly, I do prefer most of the whiskeys on this list to what I chose for whiskey of the year. That's because I'm just not considering the price. Do I think they're worth it? Yes, I do, but they are more expensive. And when I choose whiskey of the year, I want it to be not necessarily cheap, but affordable. Now, it is important to note that while I'm giving that $100 minimum, I'm also doing a $200 maximum. And that's to say maximum $200 here in this market, which is one of the cheapest markets in the world. I live in Taiwan. Uh, in your market, it might exceed 200. I mean, I'm not gonna, I can't account for that. The point is none of these are like super luxury, ultra premium 50 year old whiskeys. Uh, these are whiskeys that for me, they're on the more expensive side, but they're whiskeys that are still attainable if you really want to treat yourself to something special, but you don't want to take out a second mortgage. And interestingly, although not surprisingly, the vast majority of bottles on this list are 18 year old whiskeys. Back in the day, if I wanted to treat myself once in a while, I might have been able to afford a 21 year old. But nowadays, prices being what they are, if I really want to treat myself, I'll go out and I'll grab myself an 18 year old whiskey. Everything I've got on the proper list today is a single malt scotch. These might be standard releases like core range releases or special editions, limited editions. I don't really care. As always, I do have a mystery port in my glass here. This is not going to be the number one on the list as it has been in the last couple of videos. So you'll have to stay tuned after the list to find out what this one is. It's an absolutely beautiful whiskey. Your hint for today is that this is a 21 year old whiskey that I have reviewed before on the channel and I absolutely loved it, but it didn't make the proper list for a couple of reasons. One, it's not a scotch, it's an Irish whiskey. And two, it's just too expensive in most markets. I got lucky with this one. Uh, so stick around to the end of the video and let's not waste any more time. Let's jump into our list. In the meantime, if you'll kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. At the back of this list at number five, I've got a whiskey that I recently reviewed on the channel. In fact, it's the most recent review that I have on this channel and that is Brooklady 18. Now this is a weird whiskey. I love it, but if somebody doesn't love it, I get it. In my review, I talked about how this is not a particularly balanced whiskey. It's kind of an oddball. It's also got these sort of like lactic funky notes in there that will not be for everyone. But despite all that, this one comes together in a way that I personally really like. This stuff gives it a 50% ABV. It's been matured in bourbon, sauternes, and port casks, which is kind of an interesting combination. Uh, here in Taiwan, I got lucky. I paid $125 for this. Although in most markets, it sells for closer to 180. Obviously, I like it for the first price and not so much for the second, especially considering that this is going to be such a divisive whiskey. Uh, like I said, I really like it. It works for me, but it's not something I'm telling you to run out and buy. Try before you buy because it's a weirdo, uh, but I still love it. Comes in at number five, Brook Laddie 18. Next up at number four, we've got a sherry whiskey, and this is not a whiskey that I loved out the gate. It did take me a while to warm up to it, but by the time I finished the bottle, I absolutely love this stuff. Aberlour 18 double sherry cask finish. This stuff gives us an ABV of 43%. Our sherry cask finishes have been done in Oloroso and PX casks. And one thing to note about this is that it is different from the old versions of Aberlour 18. This only came out a few years back, maybe, I don't know, three or four years ago. Uh, and I do think this is better. If you know Aberlour, then you know that this is a brand that excels at sherry. And for me, the brand can be very hit or miss. They have a lot of stuff that I like, but they have a lot of stuff that I don't as well. Uh, but this one is excellent. It's subtle, it's nuanced, it's layered, it's complex, really fun one to explore. And while I realize it is more expensive in most other markets here in Taiwan, it's only 120 US, which I'm happy to pay, especially if you're a person who really likes older sherried whiskeys. This stuff is gorgeous. Comes in at number four, Aberlar Double Sherry Cast Finish. Our next bottle at number three is one I don't think you'll have seen coming. Uh, at number three, I've got Glen Morangy 18, the Infinita. And this is not a whiskey that gets talked about by enthusiasts. And I don't know why, because as far as I'm concerned, it's one of the best bang for buck 18 year olds out there. Maybe it's hurt by the fact that it's a really big corporate brand, that it's available everywhere, that it's affordable. And it is certainly hurt by the fact that it's 43%. 
uh, but I would encourage you guys to give this one a chance. This is a refined, layered, complex, nuanced whiskey. We have bourbon and sherry and spices and fullness. We have that beautiful Glenmorangie House style and it's elevated by the age and some really good blending. I think the new version of this stuff is every bit as good, albeit different to the old version, although some people will debate that. Now here in my market, I actually pay just shy of 100 US, which for me is a phenomenal deal, but I think in most markets it is going to be above 100, which is why I still included it on this list. Regardless, this is one of the cheaper bottles on this list, and it's one of the cheaper 18 year olds out there, and it's fantastic. Guys, don't turn your nose up at this one. It's phenomenal. Whiskey comes in at number three, Glenmore G18. All right, number two is difficult for a couple reasons. One, it's been discontinued. Two, it was already my number one last year. So if it weren't discontinued and I weren't trying to mix things up, I'd probably just have it at number one into perpetuity. It's phenomenal whiskey, Longmorn 18, the old one. Now Longmorn does have a new version of the 18 year old and it's a cast strength version and I've got it back there. It's absolutely phenomenal. I will be reviewing at one point. However, when they re-released it, they upped the price substantially and it does make sense. It's cast strength, it's gonna be more expensive, but they, they more than doubled it, at least here in my market. Um, so from a value perspective, I still do prefer the old 18 and it's actually still quite available here. You can still find it on store shelves in my market and hopefully that's true in yours too. And if you can, grab it. I cannot recommend this stuff enough. This is probably the bottle that I have the most backups of out of all my backup bottles. Uh, I love it that much. I just love the Longmorn house style. It, it speaks to me. It is complex, it is rich, it is bright, it is clean, it is grassy, great intensity at 48%. Guys, this is a phenomenal whiskey. And coming in in my market at just around 110 US dollars, I think it's a steal. And that explains why I've got so many backups of this stuff. So grab it while you can. Longmorn 18, number two. Okay, number one is interesting because I love my well-aged and mature whiskeys. This is the youngest whiskey on this list by a full six years. It is a 12 year old and it's a divisive whiskey. Some people love it. Other people say, yeah, it's nice, but it's not worth the money. Um, Rose Isle 12. The one I've got is the inaugural release from 2023. It's part of Diageo special releases. I have not tried the 2024 yet, although I hear it's kind of in the same vein, which is good news for me. Uh, and as far as I'm concerned, this is probably the most exciting new brand to come up on the scene in the last couple years. And this is a really interesting case, aside from the fact that it's an inaugural release at a full 12 years of age, uh, which is not something you ever see. Uh, Diageo just kind of quietly slipped it in with the special releases last year. There was no big fanfare. Of course, some people were talking about it, but it wasn't like this whole big thing in the whiskey scene, and you think it would be. And of course, when I found out about it, I really wanted to try it. It's a new brand. I always want to try new brands, but I guess I was a little bit cynical. Uh, a lot of people are a little bit cynical when it comes to Diageo special releases for good reason. We won't get into it. Uh, but yeah, that high price tag for an unproven brand, I wasn't sure, so I sat on it for a while. Not literally, that sounds uncomfortable. Anyway, a friend eventually picked up a bottle, shared it with me, and right out the gate, I knew this was a banger. What's the ABV here? 56.5%, complex, interesting, bright, clean, characterful. I immediately knew I needed a couple bottles of this. Now note that this is not a whiskey that's reinventing the wheel in any way. It's just a fantastic execution of familiar flavors. And coming in at 120 US in my market, yes, that's high for a 12 year old, even though it is cast strength, but it's the character, it's the quality that sells it for me. It had to be number one. I know it's going to be a controversial pick, but I love this stuff too much. There we go. Rose Isle 12. All right, that's the list, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And remember, this is all just opinion. I'm just some kid on the internet talking about whiskey. But if you disagree, you are free to tell me down below in the comments. And of course, I want to hear from you guys. So what are your top non-budget picks from 2024? And remember, our minimum threshold is 100 US. And finally, if you stuck around to find out what the mystery pour is, your hint from earlier is that this is a 21-year-old non-scotch that I have reviewed and loved before here on the channel. What I'm drinking is Redbreast 21. Absolutely gorgeous whiskey. As far as I'm concerned, this is easily the best from the Redbreast line, although I haven't had you know a bunch of their special releases, their exclusive stuff, but phenomenal stuff. The only reason that it's not on the list, it's not the Irish thing, I don't really care about that, it's the price. 
Uh, this is over 300 US dollars in some markets, which is wild. It's a great whiskey. It's not worth that much. However, I did want to include it in this video because I recently picked this one up in Japan for the low, low price of 120 US dollars, which is phenomenal value for a bottle like this. Absolutely gorgeous stuff. So yeah, basically I wanted to make you jealous. I wanted to gloat. I wanted to be the subject of your envy because it gives me validation, which does not sound healthy. I should probably talk to someone. Anyway, that's the end of the video. Uh, here are some patrons. Thank you very much to them. You can join them. I've got links and that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you in the next video, guys. Take care.